You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Hey Ramblers, today's episode is brought to you by Fangoria. Since 1979, Fangoria has been the authority in the world of contemporary horror. As the only sanctuary for horror aficionados in its early days, it has now grown into an empire that expands beyond its celebrated magazine. From t-shirts, coffee mugs, beanies, enamel pins, there's something for every horror fanatic in your world, even if it's you. So head on over to shop.fangoria.com slash pencil and paper productions or use code pencil and paper productions at checkout to get 20% off your first order or magazine subscription. Yes, it is a mouthful, which is why there are links in the show notes down below. That's shop.fangoria.com slash pencil and paper productions or code pencil and paper productions at checkout for 20% off Fangoria. First in fright since 1979. Buy it or we'll tear your soul apart. Podcast, the show about all things horror. <laughs> we hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Horror Ramblings Podcast. You know what this show's about by now. I, I, I would hope that you would. If you don't, let me tell you. It's about all things horror. I didn't say all things horrors, I said horror, so that's a different kind of podcast. I'm sure those are out there. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen a lot of clips of those, but let's just jump right in to though today. How you doing today, Stephen? Doing all right. It's a gloomy, doomy day out there. Hurricanes are barreling through, and I'm hoping everybody's safe out there, but I've seen seen videos, especially in North Carolina. I feel sorry for those people. It's some, some heavy shit, man. Yeah, it's... Um... So... It's, it's scary out there right now. I, I know there's a lot of people posting up about what they're going through. I, I'm happy to say that I haven't seen too many joking videos. Um, I, I have seen a few videos where people are trying to make light of the situation, but they're not like disrespectful videos or anything like that. It's like people that are, are in it or about to be in it making some, making some slight jokes. Um, I saw a guy with a metal trash can that he had cut armholes out in. And he had an umbrella attached to it, and he was saying it was his hurricane suit, and that he'd be safe in it. Um, oh, okay. It was kind of a funny video. Like the, the the guy that I the guy that made the video, he makes a lot of really goofy videos like that. Um, but he he ended the video like all serious, and he was like, "Hey, stay safe out there. Love you guys. Make sure that you're you know you're inside." And I don't know. It's just you know crazy weather, crazy crap going on. It it happens unfortunately. So. Yeah, I, I hope everybody out there is just being safe. <laughs> so, mm. oh man, yeah, <laughs> it is gloomy today though. Yeah. Yeah. Any exciting news that you've seen? I'm a little bummed by well, news lately. So. Yeah, I don't know if I've got anything of uh, exciting news because I'm seeing a lot of cancellations. One specific that really pissed me off: Chucky has been canceled. So there will be no fourth season. Uh-huh. And Brad Dorf was apparently very, very excited for the prospect of season four, saying that he had been told by Don Mancini what f- season four was going to be, and he was he was ecstatic. He was like, I can't wait. And then these fuckers have to pull the plug on it. But Don Mancini has said, Chucky always comes back. So hopefully they can work that into a, another movie. Or maybe they'll, they'll move the series. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what the the deal is right now. But um, what? Just a little pissed. Where was the series playing from originally? The series was for some reason simulcast on Sci Fi Channel and USA, and then would drop on Peacock. So from where I'm sitting, I'm thinking you know somebody like Peacock could pick it up, or since Shutter was. Uh, airing it they could scream box yeah I, I was uh, thinking shutter any of these others I, I i was thinking shutter if if that were to work um that would be really yeah. you know i did find something interesting out about streaming uh the other day uh, I, I was watching an interview and it was um i believe it was the guy that did um invader zim's voice he was talking about hmm. about streaming and a lot of those streaming networks what they do 
for like royalties for um, for the performers when they drop a series that's been off the air for a while or they make new content for it they don't pay those people until the second month of streaming like hmm. that's when they get the royalties from the second month and beyond and the guy that did invader zim's voice he's like let's be real if a series that you loved hit a streaming service when are you going to watch it most likely within the first month that it's on that service and i'm just like that's fucked up <laughs> like that yeah. that's when they get the that's when they would get the most out of it but the services want to you know they want to keep that stuff hush hush I, I and i know not every streaming service does that but i guess a lot of them do but i can't believe yeah i i was waiting to hear them talk about season 4 of chucky because from everything i've seen it was extremely well received and and everything else but i mean it's kind of like you know, Ash versus Evil Dead, that series did fantastic, but they still canceled it. Yeah. So this one got its three seasons in a in a can, I guess, however you want to put it. So I'm kind of pissed about that, but I'm hoping that this won't be the last time we see Chucky. I'm sure it won't be, but I'm still just bummed that the one avenue we had that was solid, they had to fuck us on. So. And Brad Dourif also, didn't he say that he was he was retiring from acting other than the Chucky stuff? So, yeah, man, that's terrible. Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you ever watch Pretty Little Liars on HBO or Max or whatever the fuck? Because we can't be on one name. Pretty Little Liars. Like the only Pretty Little Liars I've ever heard of is the show. Yeah, that's, that's what the I'm show. I've yeah, I've known of it. Um, I know a lot of women who were obsessed with one of the main characters in that. The, the mm -hmm. like teacher guy or whatever. But um. Yeah, never really watched it. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter anymore. It was too canceled. So, uh, you know, don't don't get invested in shit. That's what I'm trying to, to let you know. Just temper your expectations. Right. Jesus. Uh, and speaking of uh, shows that hopefully will get to finish whatever run they're going to do, Teacup from James Wan is supposed to be dropping on Peacock next month. or this. I guess it'll be October by the time you're listening to this. So this month, you know. Is when you're you're see you're you're wondering when we're recording now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It seemed like it would be an interesting concept, maybe. So we'll see. Kind of keep an eye on that. Um, what else did we get here? No, no, I don't want to talk about that. Or that. Oh yeah, uh, legacy stuff. For some strange, odd reason, Freddie Prince Jr. has decided to join the the sequel to I Know What You Did Last Summer. So he's he's coming back because I guess his character is going to be important. He's going to be the uh, Nev Campbell of it all. Ugh. Maybe. I don't know. He could be the Courtney Cox because, hey, did you hear that? That's another thing in relation to casting Courtney Cox. Uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but she has not signed on to Scream 7. I think everybody made this assumption she had, but she has not signed on to that movie. And I'm OK with that. You know, yeah, I think it's OK. I think it's okay. We don't need her anymore. I'm honestly surprised she's still alive. I expected her to die in the last movie. Yeah. But she skated by on the skin of her teeth you, somehow. You know what I just thought of? You know, we, we previously talked about, I, I you and Katrina had talked about in a violent nature. <clears throat> we talked about it on the last show. Do that concept, but with Scream. That could be fun. Don't tell us who the killer is and let us try to figure it out. I think that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> that could be interesting. Yeah. Man, they got to do something new with the Scream stuff. And I'm sorry, but I liked the original. I know what you did last summer. I thought it was okay for what it was. Like, it wasn't the best movie I'd ever seen. I liked it for what it was. Didn't like the sequel. Why are we still beating a dead horse in this case? Because that's really what they're doing. It's just, I'm over it. I was all for shifting gears into new characters, new territory, new things and then they they had to botch that so that's, that's why i'm losing interest i know people were just like well they're just retreading what i guess but at least they were trying to keep it fresh and interesting in some ways i give them credit for that you know, I don't know. they they should do more movies like you know th th so they did the movie that the town that dreaded sundown sundown and then they did like the remake of it and i love the i love the whole concept because even in the remake they talk about the original film and they talk about how the original film was based off of real killings and they wrap it all up. And that's the most meta thing I've ever heard of, but it worked. 
and it worked well. And that that's one of those movies that it's actually a good movie, and I think it gets slept on. It's like, yeah, it's one we had to talk about it on the show sometimes. Yeah, I would love to talk about it. Just give me more of that. <laughs> uh, there's a new movie coming out next year in March called Sinners, directed by Ryan Coogler, starring Michael B. Jordan. Uh, looks to be a vampire flick. Trailer was pretty solid from what I saw. Like, had my interest yeah. peaked, so uh, I'm going to keep my eyes on that. I have to say something real quick. This is very random. I put on a random movie the other day. Um, I put on Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I don't know if you've watched that. Mm, no, but I have heard of it. It's got, um, oh, what's his name? Is it Pete, Pete Davis or whatever from Saturday Night Live? Oh, Pete Davidson. Davidson, there it is. That movie... It, I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought it was fairly entertaining. But the ending of that movie, I feel like it either pisses people off or it makes you laugh like there's no tomorrow. I was the latter. I I saw the ending and I laughed my ass off because the whole freaking movie is just one big misunderstanding. And I was all for it. I know that's really random, but I just I wanted to mention that because I, I don't even know what prompted me to watch it. I've, I've been trying to watch a few movies that I've not seen um, in a while. I still need to watch Abigail because I want to talk to you about that and I really want to talk about Thanksgiving because I have not watched it yet and I still need to. That is one we, we need to put a pin in because I did want to talk about that this year for Thanksgiving. So uh, Black Friday, that's... I, I feel like we should just go ahead and put a pin in that and tell everybody, tune in. Black Friday, Thanksgiving this year will be Thanksgiving movie. Just go ahead and put that on your calendar. <laughs> know what to expect that is a, that is a planned episode yeah <laughs> uh i i'm a little bummed by this but at the same time i'm not surprised by it uh, it looks like the new hellboy film the crooked man is going to be getting a straight to digital release so it's not going to theaters and like i said i'm not surprised by that kind of felt like it was going to get put on something <laughs> so uh yeah I, it'll be out this month sometime, so if, you, if it was something you're looking forward to, I haven't heard any reviews for it, so I don't know if it's any good. Yeah. Keep our eyes on I it. Still, I, still want an, I still want a third installment. I want Ron Perlman as Hellboy one more time. And they, so many people they do. Could even, they could even fast forward in time, and they could, make him, they could make him an older version of Hellboy. That way he's not doing as many, you know, more... More of the just shoot now, ask questions later, or don't ask any questions at all because everybody's dead. He doesn't have to be yeah. as physical in it for it to be good. He just, he made that character, and I don't care what anybody says, he did. <laughs> uh, I, I know this is a movie you're going to keep your eyes on uh, whenever it drops on, a, I guess, a, a streaming platform. I don't know if this is in theaters or not. Let me double check before I say anything further. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't know if it's playing, it's in theaters, or it will be, it's in theaters now, yes. Yeah. So uh, a movie called Azrael seems to be getting some good reviews. Uh, it's a silent, I guess that's what you would, dialogue-free, that's, that's what it would be. Dialogue-free survival horror movie starring Samara Weaving. So there you go. You won't get to hear her talk, but she, she'll just sit there and look at you the whole time, I, I guess. I, I'm, I'm I cool know. with that. She doesn't have to say a thing to me as long as she's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, we talked about James Wan a moment ago, and if I'd have seen this beforehand, I would have brought this up then, but apparently he's producing a RoboCop TV series for Amazon. It could be good. I, it could be fun. Uh, I hope they don't try to overthink it. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to say, don't overthink it. You can kind of keep it simple sometimes, and shit just works, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay that out, because I'm going to come back to that later. Uh... <laughs> What what are we doing here? Let's see. Da, da, da. No, no. Hey, uh, Alien Romulus will be on digital this month, and it'll be on Blu-ray and 4K in December. So uh, I'm something you're looking forward. I'm to. I'm very excited to see that. I, I wanted to go to the theater to see it, but I didn't get. That. Uh, the Killer Clowns game. Remember we've talked about that. The kind of the asymmetrical. Well, what what do they call it? The four on PvP. Whatever. Four on one, three on two, however many who's fighting what. Anyway, they're they're adding characters to the game, and you get to play as Elvira and Tom Savini. How cool is that? Okay, I could get behind that. Yeah, it's uh, something you weren't thinking about, but it was like, why not? It's so random, too. Just to, well, I mean, it's not that very random. Uh, you know, man. it's random in the sense of it's like, but why? Right. They're, they're not connected to that franchise 
to my knowledge. I, I feel like they've become not so much Tom Savini. And I don't want to say that, like, I don't mean this disrespectfully. Elvira's just become kind of like a parody of herself in, in a sense. Mm. It's like you, you see her pop up everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I was at Walmart the other day and she had, they had these figures of her that were just very random. I'm like, why does anybody need a Elvira action figure? Like, I thought about it for a minute, and I'm like, well, it is anatomically correct. Maybe that's why somebody would buy it, but you never know. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, I hope I'm going to say her name right, because I always feel like I, I'm never going to say it right. Is it Micah Monroe? She was in the, the It Follows. Is it Micah or Mika? M Mika. M-A-I-K-A. Mika. Micah. Mika. Who? You know who she is. Anyway, she's going to be starring in a, a remake of The Hand That Rocks a Cradle. Does anyone remember that movie? I can get behind that. I can get behind that. I don't remember if anybody remembers that movie, but I remember that movie. There was a big deal made about yeah. that movie because it was like, oh my God. Ooh. Uh, I know this is probably not something people also wanted to hear, but I know we brought it up on the show quite a bit, and I'm just... Uh, Sorry to say that I've been hearing a lot of bad reviews for Salem's Lot, saying that it's just an empty, shallow remake that doesn't do anything new, original, or exciting. It's just kind of like, eh. and the tra- so that's disappointing. And the trailers for it made it look. So- I'm still gonna watch it. <laughs> it's just disappointing, you know, because we've been waiting, and we didn't want to give that asshole Zaslav. Uh, some credit that he was can't because you're gonna release this, but you're not gonna release that Coyote versus Acme f- movie that sounds like a fucking blast, right? Fuck you, David Vazlav, Zavzlav, whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> uh, there's a new movie coming on Netflix that sounds interesting, but I also feel like it sounds like something we've already done recently. A uh, movie's called Time Cut, and it sounds like a Back to the Future meets Scream. But I felt like we did that with time. Ta- was it Totally Killer? Yeah, Totally you know? Killer, yeah. So I don't know what this is going to do any different. It's an interesting, so. I'll say this. It's an interesting concept, the whole killer and time travel thing. I'm good with Totally Killer, though. Like, I really enjoyed that movie. That movie was a lot of yeah. fun. So if they're going with, if they're going with some more, like, serious angle for it, maybe. I think it would be cool to see... Something where people are stuck in a time loop because the killer just wants to keep toying with them and killing them in different ways and they have to figure it out. But that also kind of feels like the whole concept of Happy Death Day. You know, it's they're good ideas, but it can quickly become a gimmick that's not good. (laughs) Yeah, I still want to see the third Happy Death Day and I don't see why they can't get that shit off the ground. Blumhouse keeps saying, oh, we'll, we'll do it. And. Christopher Landon's on board. They don't want to fucking do it. Fuck y'all. Whatever. People want to see it, damn it. Yeah. Uh, Mike Flanagan's Life of Chuck has finally got a uh, distributor, Neon, which is a name that I, I've started to take note of. They're starting to, to do some interesting stuff. Like they, they I think they did uh, or released Long Legs, which is that weird Nicolas Cage movie. I feel like that's just Nicolas Cage on a typical day. Yeah. I mean, we were trying to be nice about it, but uh, I'm excited about something that I probably will not get to experience, and you're probably asking yourself, why not? You could do it. I could, but they always do these things on very inconvenient days. Uh, But uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is coming back to theaters for a limited engagement, 50th anniversary, 4K remastered picture quality, sound, the whole works. I would love to see that movie in theaters. I really, really would, but... It seems like the days are Wednesday, and I guess I could go on the Sunday, but it didn't seem to be like Sunday during the day. It was like Sunday in the evenings, and I got to work the next day, and I don't want to be out in Nashville in the middle of the night on a Sunday. See the problem? They don't do them nearby. (sighs) Anyway, uh, another thing that I was excited about, because Fantastic Fest is going on right now. I think that's what it's called. Is that right? I think Where they do all the the horror sci-fi stuff? I think so. I think that's right. So uh, there's some movies that are getting some sneak peeks. And one of the movies that got a sneak peek is Mr. Crockett. And apparently they didn't do such a good job. Mm. Which is disappointing. Because I've always been worried about that. You know, you have such a solid short. You know, like In a Violent Nature could have been. 
and then you expand it to a feature-length film, which in a violent nature shouldn't have been. And then you get something like this. This is what I'm talking about. This is my fear for things sometimes when you, you see these things adapted, is that they're not going to hold their weight proper. So, <sighs> hey, you need to go to Spirit Halloween and get yourself some Killer Clowns neon signs. I don't think I got neon signs this year. Yeah, they've got a Killer Clowns neon LED light-up sign. It's like their little uh, pew-pew, pew-pew guns. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so go go get you one. Uh, what else we got? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to bring that shit up. Okay, so Hillary Swank has joined Yellow Jackets, yet her ass can't come to Cobra Kai and acknowledge that she was the next Karate Kid. I'm just saying. That's fair. That's very fair. Yeah. Why, why can you not just be like, hey, I remember Mr. Miyagi. I'm the one kid no one remembers, but I exist. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, Arrow, for some reason, and I, I was a little bummed by this because I thought when I heard about it, I was like, oh, cool, they're going to finally do a, a 4K set, and it's not. Uh, but Arrow is releasing, and it only seems to be in the UK for right now, A they're doing their own Blu-ray 4K, or Blu-ray, not 4K, sorry, set of Critters, a four-movie set. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> The four got lost in translation, but all four critter movies, yes, four, four critter movies released by Arrow Video in the UK in this box set uh, will be released in December. So if you're in the UK and you want that, there you go. But not in 4K. It is only Blu-ray. I'm sorry I said 4K. I got got ahead of myself. It's four movies I'm on Blu-ray. <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to be on 4K, and I know they will be. Cause, Cause, shout right now. They're they're cleaning house. I don't know. I've noticed that when they're just like everything's going out of print, and it's like, gee, I wonder why. Cause you're gonna repackage it in a 4K. Yeah. So I'm watching right now. I know what's happening. <laughs> uh, did you know that there's a movie out uh, called, or there's about to be? I don't know if it's out right now or not. It's called. I don't even want to say it aloud. Crack coon. <laughs> crack coon. Can you can you guess what it's about? A raccoon on crack. There you go. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a weird little fucker, and they said just look at it as a uh, rocket raccoon meets cocaine bear, and uh, it'll be on Screenbox. Uh, well, it's on Screenbox right now. If you're listening to this, why? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's like the the sloth horror movie, Slother House. I think is what it's called. Slother House. Yeah, I remember. I've heard of that. I've not watched it. I heard people. If we, like, if we need to watch it, the, the the Ramblers need to say watch it. The, and tell the, us to there's watch what it. we should do if the Ramblers want. We will watch every terrible animal horror movie that there is. I just saw one the other day. It was called Aquarium of the Dead. Oh, I have heard of that, but I've not watched it. But I've heard it's of it. it's like zombie fish and sharks and shit in an aquarium, and I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> uh, okay, whatever. Uh- <laughs> I think that's about all I got. I don't think there's anything else that I can see. I want to I want to shout out something real quick. Okay. Um it is horror related but not horror related. Um to all the ramblers out there if you like gaming, uh check out the new animalities in Mortal Kombat because there are some pretty good ones and there is one in particular that makes reference to jaws and it is phenomenal. I just want to say as soon as I saw that you, you were the first person I thought of as soon as I saw it. I was like, I have to tell Steven to watch this because he will love it. <laughs> so It was solid. I liked it. Um, They've done some for the DLC characters. They haven't done one for Ghostface yet, but it'd be interesting to see what they would what they would do for Ghostface. So waiting for that. Isn't one. it odd? Isn't it odd to have that character? Like he feels so misaligned in that universe right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I do I do see where that where that would seem like that just because the other DLC characters that they bring into it that they are very powerful characters. Ghostface is just a guy in a costume. <laughs> um I got to admit though like the the fatalities and stuff they have for him, that stuff fits in perfectly. But mm. yeah, I I get where you're coming from with with that like a lot of these characters you're like there's no fucking way. Like Ghostface yeah. versus Omni-Man? No, we're done. 
game over. We're done. Yeah. Even though I, I, I think it's funny, the animality they have for Omni Man, he turns into the giant like tentacle monster thing that they fight in the show. A lot of people were confused. And I was like, have you not watched the show? <laughs> like, man, but yeah, I just I wanted to shout that out while I was thinking about it. Like, they're cool just to sit and watch. So sure. I guess that means we're on to the to the main subject, something that I'm I'm very curious about today because we finally we I've I've realized that the best way to get each other to watch movies is to say that we're going to talk about them <laughs> on the podcast. It does uh, light a fire under asses so, <laughs> when you commit to it. Yeah, it, it does, doesn't it? It just it's like, well, now I got to watch this. So mm-hmm. we are talking about the Womp Stomp Films fan film, Never Hike Alone, which I, I will give some praise to. I, I do like the concept of it. I like the idea of the one-on-one thing. I think it builds a sense of anxiety within the audience. <laughs> um. I know how I feel on the film. I want to know how you feel on the film. And I want to say something real quick that I think is cool. Uh, but mm. before I get your opinion on the film, I think it's cool. The guy that wrote it and directed it also plays Jason in it. Yeah, I I, I had some things to say about that, too, when I noticed that. I, I feel like he's just a um, huge Friday fan, and he's like, I need a reason to play Jason on film. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can agree with you on that. Huh? I don't know if I can agree with you on that (laughs) because, all right, look, 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 all right. Oh boy. (laughs) Now you have to, you have to understand where I'm coming from for starters. All right. Huge, huge Friday the 13th fan, right? Love Jason Voorhees. Love these movies very much in the same vein that you have a love for the nightmare series. So when something feels off or feels inferior in some ways, you're going to, you're gonna I'll tear it apart. Have things to say yep. about it because you're like, hey, this is I'm being protective of this, and I understand how I I, I understand that I I can sometimes be a little critical, and and then I I can also be uh, upset when people get critical, and I'm like, hey man, just give shit a chance, <laughs> and I also understand I'm trying not to be that guy, okay? Because hundred like I'll, I'll give credit all day. For this film of being a very well-made, fan-made film. Okay? Small budgets, all that. Mad respect for that all day because I understand there's a lot that goes into that. And it's not easy. It's It can be very difficult. And they probably had a little bit more to work with than anything that I've ever had to work with in the past. So, respect. But I don't know if I think this guy, Vincent DeSanti, is a true fan of Jason Voorhees in so much that I I questioned a lot of his decisions when it came to Jason. And it was like, no, 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 wait, what? No, I don't know. <laughs> Those would be the arguments I would be having in my head that just didn't set right with me. Okay. Um. So I don't even know where to begin. Like, where do you want me to begin with that? Well, let, let me say something real quick, because... Some of the movement, some of the behavior of Jason, I can understand where you're coming from. One thing that I was thinking about when I was, because I, I re it, it'd been a while since I watched it, so I rewatched it last night to give myself like a refresher. I, w- I was up pretty late last night, so. <laughs> the the way that the film plays out to me, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like in Freddy versus Jason, how everybody just kind of forgot about Freddy. It's like everybody just kind of forgot about Jason. They forgot about Camp Crystal Lake. People stopped going there. And that was actually one detail I do want to touch on because I, as we were watching it, I was like, that is a great concept going, like, steal it if you want to because I know the internet's out there and they're probably looking for a great idea for this fucking franchise right now since they can't get anything (laughs) off the ground. So I was honestly thinking as I was watching this, I was like, why don't they do that? Like, do what would be considered, I guess, a legacy sequel, but don't worry about trying to to connect threads with any of the other movies fucking just go in and be like no one knows where the fuck they are they're just up somewhere in new jersey nature preserve or whatever it may be at the time Mm -hmm. they whatever reasons you need to get a group of people in this area they have no idea where it is 
what it is, the history, anything. And then shit just starts to go sour. And then eventually someone starts to come across the details and be like, holy shit, I know where we are. So you're doing a very simple Friday movie, kind of reintroducing everybody to the lore and the idea. In fact, we even thought this would be a great idea. And I don't know how the fuck you'd pull it off in this day and age, (laughs) other than digital trickery. Yeah. But market this movie as just another slasher. Hide the fact that Jason is in it. That would be cool. And let that be a fucking surprise. That would be cool. Find some way to really, really sell this concept. Lure somebody in. But yeah, hide that one little detail. And when you start seeing Crystal Lake or or any of these little things, like just pepper it in until the big reveal to where you you start to question it. (laughs) Yeah. And then when you realize you're like, oh my God. And then you've got your Jason back. Because why? Like, there's no reason this franchise should be dead in its tracks. Right. You know, it's it's such a simple concept that you can do. I, it, this guy, I mean, this was not a bad concept. You know, a guy just caught hiking. Fucking Gen Z influencers that's, and shit today. That's what I love about this movie is it's, you know, you're so used to a Friday the 13th film, Jason killing all kinds of people. I kind of like the one on one and and what I was what I was going to get at with with, you know, it seemed like the camp had been ignored all these years. Mm -hmm. I I think that at least for me, that kind of lends itself to the fact that Jason's not quite himself. I know I know Jason is a killing machine, but it's almost like it's been so long. Jason's been out of practice. I know that sounds like a weird concept, but that's what made me think about it, because if you if you look at it. You could tell that Jason was getting more and more irritated, more angry at like simple things like missing, missing the target, things like that. And to me, it was like, yes, it was out of place for the character of Jason. But I'm also thinking to myself, how long has it been since he's stalked and tried to kill someone? Like, how long has it been in this film? And I, 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 I don't know if I give that as an excuse. Though, no, and, and man's I, always been efficient when he comes out of the ground. No, and, and I get that. I get that. But. It's like that that was one thing that kind of lend itself, at least for me, to sort of look past some of those things a little bit, because I feel like toward the end of the film, he starts to get more true to the Jason that that people are used to, in a sense, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, but for, for me, the thing that made the film enjoyable was just the whole concept itself. Like, you know, the influencer that's vlogging ends up at Camp Crystal Lake, It's like the one on one thing. Let's be real. If if this was Kane Hodder's Jason, this would have been a much shorter film. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and maybe that's where I'm having my issues is because I'm comparing. Because the guy's physicality, and I wasn't trying to look at Kane as like the end-all be-all because everyone's done their version of Jason. But I even felt like he didn't emulate any of the other guys in some ways like some of their movements there it felt a little too abrupt and jerky like i don't know it didn't feel jason like you know what i mean yeah there was something off about how he he moved and then yeah all right so it's it's jason himself that i have the problem with okay you say he's out of practice he's never felt like he's ever been out of practice with killing and i felt like you're just allowing him to seem incompetent and he's always been efficient. Yeah. And it's bothering the fuck out of me every time. Because the guy does like, he fights him. Like, he literally fights him. I'm like, how the fuck is this guy fighting him when we've seen so many other people, especially that one guy in, in part eight, go toe-to-toe with Jason and he takes one swing and punches his fucking head off. Yeah. This guy gets punched and he's perfectly fine. You know, there's some inconsistencies with shit we've seen. <laughs> That's my problem. You know, and see the, the the thing about this movie too is you almost wonder when this movie takes place in a sense, like where it would fit into the timeline. Like, is is this something where Jason's been alone since like the first movie? Maybe they haven't taken the other movies into consideration. Like, I just kind of assume this was like after Freddy versus Jason. So give it what a good 10, 15 years. He's just been left alone ever since. Like, they have finally just said, leave that fucking shit alone. And, like like I said, I, I try to justify justify things. I, th- I think of ways to, you know, justify things. 
he he is a rotting corpse. I mean, that's what Jason pretty much is. <laughs> so it's like, is this explaining, you know, w- will Jason get to a point where he starts to not be as proficient? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, see, that was even another th- uh, thought that I had too watching it is trying to think of this concept or, or at least the concept of Jason kind of in the uh, very similar vein as Freddy, where he's maybe like a wraith or, or just some paranormal entity that's bound to this area, you know? Kind of like Victor Crowley. And so, yeah, yeah, very much in that same vein. So just bound to this area in a sense, like, stay the fuck off my area. And the people of Crystal Lake realized that. They cordoned it off and said, just stay the fuck away from this area. And be done with it, you know, until we can figure out what to do with this guy. And then you can even kind of work in what they did in Jason X, because I know that goes into the future, so don't fuck with that. Just be like, yeah, eventually they they built a facility here, and, and yeah, that's what happened. Someone got the balls like some people with uh, money, thought, fuck this, we're going to capture him. And that becomes a thing. Yeah. But at the time, you know, at, in the moment, you can just say, no, the people were just, we, we fenced it off and said, people stay the fuck out. And if you go in there, it's your, your own damn fault. You know, maybe even put up uh, violators will be shot or stabbed, whatever. (laughs) Yeah, stabbed. You know, Uh, we're not responsible for any maimed death, dismemberment, (laughs) anything that happens to you from this point forward. And people will be like, what? Just saying. Just saying. So, so, so so Jason, Jason was your biggest issue with the film itself because he just, he felt, he felt on the porch. The portrayal of he, Jason. He felt yes. unfamiliar in, in that regard, which that is completely fair. I understand that, especially, you know. Because, well, just to, just to even kind of use this as an example, I mean, throughout the entire film, I understand, I understand. He's chasing one person, so killing that guy immediately is going to shorten <laughs> this short film even shorter. I get it. But you make this very efficient killer highly inefficient, Then at the end of the film, you introduce us to a very nice Easter egg in Tommy Jarvis and Mr. I love saying his name this way, Thom Matthews. I know it's not Thom, but it's the way it's spelled. Uh, (laughs) But he shows up again as Tommy Jarvis, but that doesn't track because I I don't know if uh, he would have a job as an EMT. You know, uh, having been in a mental facility... He seems pretty well adjusted, not paranoid at all. He knows what's going on. And then Jason just comes up on him in the ambulance and they scuffle. Tommy wouldn't have allowed him to sneak up on him like that. Bullshit. See, I'm almost wondering if there would if there would have been a little bit more context there. Like if they would have told a story, like maybe they made made Tommy think that it, it all was in his head or something like mm. that. Or maybe he thought after all these years, Jason was finally gone. Yeah. You never know. It is. It, it is a nice Easter little... egg, though. <laughs> oh no, a hundred percent. It was really cool to see him. It was just how they used him, and then he again shows that Jason is incompetent because he sneaks up on Tommy but doesn't kill him. That doesn't make any sense. See what I what I kind of chalk that up to. Like in all honesty, I think Jason was going in for the kill. Tommy was fighting him, and then the other guy ran out of the ambulance, and Jason was like, "Okay, fucker, I'm gonna deal with you real quick." <laughs> I guess <laughs> i don't know man i'm just i'm just not i'm not buying it and there was even a time or two and when i realized that the director was jason i said oh that makes sense there was the <laughs> scene where his scene or like his mask got knocked off and they were trying to show kind of his face but they didn't really and i was like all right well that was interesting and then they did this shot where he picks up the mask puts it back on and then turns to the camera and looks at it and i'm like the fuck was that and then when I saw it, was that I was like, "Oh, okay, of course he's getting his his." I did close. There was a shot that I really liked in the film where Jason turns and you're looking at the mask, and it fades to like the sky with the moon in it, and it lines up with one of the yeah, eye yeah, holes yeah. of it. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll give that one some credit. That was a it was a pretty neat. Again, the, the movie's well made. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think the portrayal of a Jason is uh what it should be so i'm saying i feel like it it lacks some stuff i feel like if they if they would have made the if if they would have made a point to say that this movie was at a different time in the timeline that could maybe justify some of it a little bit because 
Jason has to get, you know, Jason has always been a pro- proficient killer, but maybe not as proficient back in the earlier days. Perhaps. So that that could that could make some sense to me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, we can twist things around all day. I've not I've not now I know that they have they have one that's called Never Hike in the Snow and they have Never Hike Alone 2. Mm. Kind of want to watch them and just see what, you know, see if there's some changes in that regard. I mean, yeah, I would I would definitely uh wouldn't mind checking out the the follow-ups just to see, because I wouldn't mind seeing I know there's one in the snow. That would be kind of neat. Yeah, and just to to kind of see that. And you know, you got to wonder like is Jason slowed slowed down a little bit in the snow, you know, mm. Things like that, like all things that you, you know, you have to wonder about. Um, what was so you said you said you thought this was well made. You like the concept. Mm. Was there was yeah. there anything else that like about the actual film itself that you kind of that, that you kind of found yourself I mean, enjoying? <laughs> I say I enjoy this, but it's also kind of feels like a letdown, too, because the one solid kill in the movie is the one that wasn't a real kill. <laughs> and it would have been a perfect kill for Jason where he st- actually smashed the guy's head yeah. uh jumping out. but again that didn't even make sense i'm sorry I don't, i'm not trying to complain but yeah he jumps out of the lake at him but he was right by the shore so how did he jump out of the lake but again it's a dream so it doesn't matter <laughs> i guess it, it it fixes its own logic it's like but it's a dream it could be deep right there at the shore why not that's how dreams work i i really appreciated the main guy in it i yeah no he wasn't bad i, I mean, thought he, that, that's another thing that could have really ruined this film for sure. you know like he was smart about things too he's like i gotta get my pack i gotta stitch up this wound or i'm not gonna make it and and, and katrina actually pointed that out when i was complaining a bit she was like he is a survivalist you know and i was like well yeah but <laughs> that's that's all i could really come up with because you know i'm just i'm always gonna side with jason he could just kill anybody fucking survivalist who cares anyway and i and i did like um i did like some of the choreography in this film a lot uh, i i love when they're in the building and they're fighting and he you know he hits jason with a fucking chair and jason just looks at him like really and he grabs him up and he slams him into the table i fucking loved that whole scene i loved how that played out mm-hmm. and i and i feel like i feel like when you get into when you get into the interactions, I feel like the suspense is there. Like, I, I do feel like it's there. I think they did a good job with some of the angles and things showing, showing like that claustrophobic, I'm hiding, I'm scared sort of feeling. I especially loved yeah. when he was looking through the peephole of the door. I think where the doorknob would have been. He's looking mm-hmm. through that and Jason turns and he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I did like a lot of that. Um, now, now I'm sitting here thinking about you know what you're saying about Jason. I'm like, yeah, you're kind of right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I guess there are some cases to be made. Like you said, they they could have been playing with the timeline a little bit. We don't know if this is a zombie Jason or the uh, mountain man Jason. I mean, I would assume the dead Jason because he the face and everything. The, yeah, and even like his hands looked very thick. You know, I don't know if you noticed that they were like too, thick and like they, yellowish. Yeah. And and that's I don't know that's kind of where my like train of thought when when he when he hits him in the neck with the axe and he pulls mm-hmm. the axe out the blood doesn't look right either and you're like okay this is like decomposing Jason who's not like that's how I looked at it I'm like this is a Jason who hasn't had to deal with anybody for a long time this is a Jason that's not at his best mm-hmm. and you know yeah I'm I'm used to Jason like okay you're done man. But if this if this is that form of Jason where and, you know, that would be an interesting concept to see too. see a Jason that's been beaten down and, you know, all the years have gone by that Jason's just not as proficient because he's mm-hmm. not, you know, flesh, flesh eventually dies. <laughs> yeah, that could be an interesting thing to see. Um, but, you know, and that, that could also go into the supernatural thing. Jason, mm. they, they finally destroy his body like in a way that's Jason's punishment. He has to stay in this decomposing body until it dies fully or is killed. Yeah. And then he comes back. When he comes back, he comes back strong and everything again. And it's like a whole process. That would, man, that would actually be a really cool concept. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a great, like we've said before, there's a great idea here, man. And I just, uh, 
it's it's the portrayal of Jason that I feel like ruins it for me. Yeah. But solid concepts that I would love to see explored in an actual movie. Yeah. If they would ever do it again. And I honestly feel like that's what we need to do. Start from scratch. Yeah. Don't try to remake or anything like that. Just say, we're doing a Friday the 13th movie today. No one remembers Jason today and go. Yeah. And and just see what happens. And I'll, I'll give this film a lot of credit too. The thing that I really enjoyed about this film the most, I'm not normally a big fan of like found footage stuff, but this was this was like a combination of found footage and third person. And I, mm-hmm. I feel like they did a really good job at making that seamless. Yep. <clears throat> and I feel like that's a very hard thing to do, but I feel like they pulled it off well. And I think that makes this film work really well. The, the, the scene mm-hmm. where he first gets thrown out of the building by Jason, you know, we kind of go from the first person to the third person when Jason comes up behind him and, and grabs him. You know, we, we jump to third person just for a second when Jason grabs him. And then as he's thrown out the window, we go back to his view from his camera. And that was all so seamless. It just, it worked. And I, I loved that about it. Yeah. Um, and the, the whole the whole sequence when he's in the, um, the ambulance, mm-hmm. I actually thought that was really cool because I, I feel like that was paying, paying tribute to the original films. You know, people, people were seeing Jason because he had, he had psychologically scarred them. And right, I feel like that's right. something that doesn't get talked about in those movies a lot. And it, it is something that I feel is, is a big part of those movies. It's a lot bigger than people think. And when you, when you like sit mm. and you think about it, you're like, man, Jason's out here giving people PTSD. <laughs> Rightfully yeah. so, but that whole sequence I thought was cool. Uh, in in the ambulance with everything, and you know the guy just freaking out. I I think he really carried it. I think his performance was great. Yeah, he, he definitely could have ruined the movie if they'd have found someone who just didn't have uh, I don't know an energy or charisma about them. And yeah, I would agree. He didn't. He he was good. He was good. That's that's about as great as I can give him credit for because he could have easily yeah. bogged it all down. Yeah, and I, I honestly feel like he was likable. Like there's some of these movies yeah. there's some of these movies where I just I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm like siding with Jason, like just kill the horny teenagers and get it over with. Hmm. You know, this this guy was yeah, just was... this guy was just vlogging. He he was hiking and he was vlogging. And I, I even mm-hmm. I even love how they have the little you know, there, there's a little bit that's kind of funny where he's trying to remember who the maker of the shovel is that he's advertising for his vlog. And he's rec- he's like, oh, shit, I can't remember what the name. And he's looking it up and he's like, eh, this looks like a piece of shit. Like it, it was a little thing, just a, just a little line in there, but it made it more real for me. <laughs> so mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I I definitely think if if you look at it from the standpoint of this is a Jason that's been out of the game, he's he's not quite himself. You know, I, I feel like this was a much more like stiff and I, I almost want to say um, decomposed Jason. Mm-hmm. Like Jason's just there waiting for his body to finally give out. He just wants to be left alone. And then some punk shows up and he hasn't dealt with anybody in so long. He's like, I'm going to kill this guy. And when that doesn't work, you know, I feel like we start to get some some image of the Jason from all of the other movies. Because I feel like toward the end of it that's where we start to get a little bit more of a extreme jason and then you know there, there is the thing with with tommy and everything that kind of throws you off and you're like what but yeah o- overall i i just i feel like they did a, a decent job making you feel like you were alone in the woods with a psycho mm-hmm. and i i feel like that's what they were what they were going for i know that the never hike in the snow is like 30 minutes long i think mm-hmm. and then never hike alone 2 is like an hour and 10 minutes or something like that. Not watched. I have not watched those. I know we, we discussed um, watching those. Hopefully this hopefully this one didn't put a, a sour taste in your mouth for watching the other ones. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I want to give them a, a shot. I mean, maybe they worked out their kinks. Uh, but if the director is still trying to play Jason and he's not learned <laughs> from him, from what he did, then I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll give Womp Stomp Studios some credit. They made that. Um, they helped with uh, Dylan's Dylan's new nightmare that fri- that uh, Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street film, and I feel like that was pretty good. Um, there there were a few things about it. I'm like, eh, you know, nothing is going to let. Let's be honest, and and this is the reason why I feel like these films struggle. Nothing is going to catch to to cap. Nothing is going to capture the magic of the original films. 
you know, the original, it's like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original Friday the 13th series, the original Nightmare on Elm Street series, even the original like Scream and Hellraiser films like that, the original Chucky. There's, there's something about those films where there's a reveal or there's just something that happens or there's a feel for the characters that you're not going to capture no matter what you do. Hmm. You know, I watched, um, the other day I watched the 2000, 2009 Friday the 13th. I put it on. I was just like, yeah, yeah I'll, you know, I'll watch it. There were a lot of things that I liked about it because there were different concepts that I never really thought about. But at the end of the day, I'm like, this isn't the Jason for me. Sure. It's just like with, and I, I'll say this now, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I know I shit on it all the time. I didn't mind Jackie Earl Haley as Freddy. I didn't. I, I There were some things that he did that I thought were really good. But nothing is going to capture the magic of these other characters, and it makes it yeah. and it it makes it really hard. Like like you were saying earlier, you're not you you know you said I'm not trying to compare it, but it's it's hard not to. It really is because that's all you know. Exactly. You know, I think it would be interesting to see a Jason kind of like this. That's maybe starting out as a killer, and so he's not as proficient. He's not as good. Or go from the other angle and be like. You know, but talk about it. Like if they had a group of survivors mm -hmm. running from Jason and they're like, hey, like somehow this this thing is alive still, but it's, you know, it, it it's alive, but it's not. It's it's undead like a zombie Jason. Let them yeah. let, let them let them take advantage of that. Like, hey, he moves a little bit slower than us. He's a lot stronger than us. But if we can move, if we can move faster than him. You know, bring up the, the fact that Jason knows the land better than they do bring those things mm -hmm. up because it's not going to piss people off because it's going to take away some of the mystery <clears throat> but it's going to explain certain things like i think that would be an interesting concept jason is decomposing all these years and he can't move as fast but he's still just as strong as he's ever been that's a cool concept mm -hmm. you just got to be faster than him one scene that i really loved in this was um it was after the whole fight in the building the guy runs out the one side and he's running and he runs around the building and I knew it was coming, but I'm like, if it doesn't happen, then it's fucking stupid that it doesn't happen. What does Jason do? I'm big and fucking strong. I'm going to bust through this side of the building right here at this guy. <laughs> I knew it was coming, but I'm like, thank you. Like, that is very real. It's not this guy's going to run into the woods and then all of a sudden Jason's boom right in front of him. No, Jason cut him off. <laughs> yeah. And I loved that. Like, that works for me. The, the 2009 remake that they did. I, I loved that, you know, Jason was living like under the ground down in like those caverns and everything. And he had the system with the bells. And when mm -hmm. the people tripped, it made and he knew where they were. Like, I like that idea. You, you, you have to think Jason's been out there for so long. He's learned how to, you know, at least, you know, in, in, in the 2009 movie, he was alive still. He wasn't dead. Yeah. So he had to learn how to track animals. He had to learn how to set traps. He had to learn all of that. Or have some knowledge of it. Hmm. You know, that's what I hate. It's like Jason was deformed. Yes, he had mental capacity issues. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't able to learn how to survive. Like, that's a very primal right. thing. Jason's always been a very primal type slasher, in my opinion, anyways. Hmm. That's part of his appeal. So, I agree. you know, for, for what this film was, I think it did a good job in that. And I, I, I guess if you if you look at it from the standpoint of I'm going to separate this from the original Friday the 13th, like those are just a whisper mm -hmm. as to what this is. That sort of makes sense to me. It, it it almost felt to me like like they were saying in this movie that all of the other movies were stories that had been told about Jason. So you didn't know if they were true or not. And then, you know, he's like, all the stories are true. So that leaves all the movies up to interpretation. Like, is that really how Jason's always been? Or were the people telling those stories that the movies were made about, were they making this character something entirely different than what he really is? Mm -hmm. That's one way you could look at it. Um, you've seen um, all the, the Leslie Vernon. Have you seen that slasher film? Like the, the, I can't think of the whole name of it. I know of it, but I've not seen so, it. So in that movie, they talk about all of, they, they talk about uh, Michael Myers, Freddy, and Jason. And they talk about mm -hmm. them all as if they were real slashers. And that the movies were made 
because they were real slashers and they're like you know f- f- the the acts that freddy committed on elm street were were so terrible that it it caused nightmares for generations to come like they make these little you know whispers of them like they say that mm-hmm. they and uh, like for jason they said you know that jason was such a brutal killer that um many people believe he still haunts the camp you know where where he where he was finally slain and i'm like if you sort of look at it that way where it's like a whisper in time i think that that helps with it a little bit but again it is so hard to separate that stuff <laughs> especially when you yeah. when, when you're a fan of something you know <clears throat> but again i i i think we should watch the other ones like we'll we'll pick a time to randomly watch the other ones and we'll we'll see what what happens with with all of that the the studio i was looking up their website they do have some original films um they have a lot of stuff to do with um with friday the 13th like i i i don't know if it's just that they want to tell their own story with it or or what it is mm-hmm. S- somebody there must like the character of jason to a degree doesn't mean they necessarily understand him fully but they they like him <laughs> enough to make some movies yeah. about him but you have any other thoughts on on it i figured i'd because I, I really want to know your like your your full opinion. I mean, it sounds like you, you liked the concept. You liked the main guy to a degree. Jason was your biggest takeaway. Was there anything like in particular you wanted to see that you didn't see? Uh, not really. At least nothing <clears throat> I could really think of. I did have <laughs> another complaint <laughs> that just occurred to me. Is the like Jason sounded very heavy. Like he was stomping around like fucking RoboCop the entire time. <laughs> that kind of bugged me a little bit too. Because I know he's supposed to be big, and I guess that was their way of trying to give him some heft, but I didn't feel like his footsteps needed to be, which is how they almost sounded a lot. And see, I wonder I wonder if that, again, this is where explaining things could, could really be beneficial. It could have even been a conversation between the main guy and Tommy. Yeah. If, if Jason is a zombie in this, and he's rotting, and that's what's making him not as proficient maybe that's making his footfall heavy maybe that's causing problems maybe i don't know i don't want to assume (laughs) (laughs) and again i don't want to sit here and bitch about it or anything like that i'm sure this is somebody's favorite thing so i I just looked up i just looked up at i wanted to look up like on i i'm on imdb and i'm looking up about you know the films so the first um, the the first one, the one that we watched, this is what it says on IMDb. I'm just going to read the very, it's a very small snippet. I'm going to read about all of them real quick for you because I want you to hear the concepts here. Uh, it says, a hiker's survival skills are put to the test when he stumbles upon the remains of an old abandoned camp and discovers its long, dark secrets. Pretty basic. Mm-hmm. The second one, 20 years after the last sighting of Jason Voorhees, Crystal Lake resident and former victim Tommy Jarvis still lives with the haunting notion that Jason will one day return. He's the and the other guy is in it. So the guy from the first one is also in this one. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm guessing that the second one probably gets a little bit more into the history because it looks like um Thom, as you say, Thom Matthews is um he's the he's at, at the top of the top build cast. On the first one he wasn't. On this one, he is. So I'm assuming he's a bigger part of of this one. Maybe we would get some answers to some things that we didn't get answered maybe in this first one. Hmm. And it looks like... So never hike in the snow. See, they, they do a little bit of a time jump here. They're jumping around. Because this one came out... So never hike in the snow came out in 2020. But here's what it says. Three months prior to the events of Never Hike Alone that follows the strange disappearance of Mark Hill... Crystal Lake resident who went for a hike in the dead of winter and never came home. So this one takes place before. Okay. So this might give us, and they've got this really cool picture. I'm actually, it's something I feel like they don't show enough. I know they've kind of touched on it, but they have Jason with the bow and arrow in one of the pictures for it. I could get behind that. I think that's kind of a cool concept. You would think that Jason would know how to use that again. You would think that he would, you know, have some general idea and it's the same thing. They have um, they have Thom Matthews as the as the top build. So he's in all of these. Like they they brought him into all of these, okay. which is kind of cool. And maybe yeah. maybe if we may, maybe if we were to watch Never Hike in the Snow since it takes place before, maybe maybe he had thought maybe he had taken Jason down in Never Hike in the Snow, and he thought mm-hmm. he thought I finally did it. He's finally gone. <laughs> and then 
he's surprised by the fact and you know that could maybe explain why jason's the way that he is in never hike alone maybe something happened in never hike in the snow sure of course it came out after so maybe they got a little bit of pushback for (laughs) never hike alone and they're like let's fix a few things that we we didn't have right and that that might be it maybe if i watch those and get a little context and be like okay well then that that tracks and maybe it fixes everything for my brain We'll we'll have to figure that out because I I would be interested to see if 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 your opinion worsens or if it changes a little bit for the better. I, I'm looking at the like the the scores. I don't try to go off of the scores on IMDb because I've seen some movies that they give terrible scores and I love them. Um, hmm. Never hike in the snow has a six point seven. Um, the first one has a six point eight, and the second one has a six point eight. Okay. So they have, they have. So I mean, they're liked. It's not like it's a, a bad, like no, no, not like people don't enjoy these these shorts or anything. Yeah, I th- I think if you um because these movies aren't that gory. Or at least this first one wasn't really all that gory. So if you were somebody who wanted to like, if your kids were kind of getting interested in horror films, you could be like, let's see how you do with this and and show this to them, and they get mm-hmm. they get this version of Jason at first, and they don't get the nudity and stuff. See how they do with that. Then when they're a little bit more ready, you get into the films and you get a much different version of Jason, a much more lethal <laughs> version of Jason. Mm. Now I'm going to now I'm going to have to binge watch all these movies just to see the the differences. So it, yeah. it sounds like the order, the best order to watch them in would be Never Hike in the Snow, then Never Hike Alone, and then the second one. Gotcha. So, well... And they may even have like a full edit because I feel like there was a, a longer version or a longer video. So it might be all of them smashed together. They may have done like an extended cut or something. That could be. I know there's also a thing. It's like the ghost cut, it says. That might be it then. Yeah. Um, Which, you know, I, I'm, I'll say I'll say it. I think um, Womp Stomp Studios has taken some chances on some things. You know, they even did, um, like I said, they did Dylan's New Nightmare. And love it or hate it, it was something different. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, I'll give this studio credit. They take chances. Right. You know, they 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 do what they what they think is best. And that, that's the thing about it. You know, love it or hate it, they they came up with an interesting concept. I would be really cool with seeing that in a movie. Of course, if if I ever got to see a like last Nightmare on Elm, not Nightmare on Elm Street. Here I go talking about Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> hey, I brought it up first. If. <clears throat> If they were to do a like final Friday the Thirteenth, I would love to, and I, I know we've talked about it before, but I, I would I would really love to see a concept of people sitting at a fire, maybe not knowing they're at Camp Crystal Lake, telling stories about Jason, telling campfire stories, and have each of the stories make it like an anthology. Have each of the stories show a different version of Jason, show him as a spirit or as just a person or any crazy thing you can think of, and then at the in in the final part of the film, reveal the real Jason. I think that would be cool. That's just me, but could be fun. You have any other thoughts on the film? I I don't really have anything else on the film right now. I will have to watch the other ones and revisit this. Maybe maybe instead of doing two parts, like two different episodes for each movie, maybe we'll just watch the the next two at some point and then just talk about it as a whole. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. But if, if you don't have anything, I, I don't have anything else, so. No, uh, that's about all I got on it. So, Ramblers, have you seen Never Hike Alone? What'd you think? What your thoughts? Did you like it? Hate it? Somewhere in the middle? Let us know on social media at Horror Ramblings or send us an email at horrorramblings at gmail.com if you want to discuss horror with other people just like you. Facebook. Discord, Instagram, join us over there. Uh, if you want to support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash pencil paper productions. You can even uh, support the show by giving us a five-star review on your favorite podcasting app and see if we posted up any questions and polls over on Spotify. Let us know what you think. Finally, if you prefer a central hub, keep up with any and all things, pencil paper productions, uh, dot com slash horror dash ramblings. Did want to say there was an answer on our poll about Hellfest. Love it or hate it, uh, one one vote for solid. So somebody loved it. So uh, thank you for voting, whoever you are out there in the, the world. Thank you for voting. But fi- anyway, uh, links are down in the show notes down below for your convenience. And remember, guys, stay spooky out there and never hike alone.
This has been the Horror Ramblings Podcast. <laughs> Join us next time for even more. <laughs>